Hey everybody, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're doing a review on the Google Pixel Pro. We're going to put special emphasis on the camera and the computational photography and some of the features. And of course this was given to me from Google, but I didn't have to do a review and I don't have to say any particular things. I can say whatever I want, so this will be an honest review. And then I also have the case. And the case is called kind of semi-transparent, um, so we can see the colors of the phone. So it comes in three different colors. It comes in black, white, and this one here, which is known as Sorta Sunny. So this has a Gorilla Glass Invictus on the front and back. So it's the strongest glass made by Gorilla Glass. One of the things that I really like about this is we're in the middle of a pandemic, so everyone's wearing a mask, so they're not doing face ID, but they're not putting a big ugly fingerprint sensor either. What they have now is a thumbprint or fingerprint sensor on the front which is just really smart so I can actually do it through the glass to unlock the phone um, and we can see it's an edge-to-edge -edge screen with a curved screen on the very edges we have a pinhole camera so there's no notch on here beautiful screen um, one of the things that just is very striking about this phone is the screen it's a QHD and it's just it's beautiful, it's very vivid, and it almost looks like it's printed on there. It's so clean and vivid. The chip inside is the Google Tensor. So this is Google's first system on a chip that they actually make in-house now, so they're making their own chip. So this gives them a lot more control over things like what they want to do with the AI and the kind of features they want to build into their phone that they weren't able to do before. Now they're making their own hardware and their own chip. They can really unlock a lot of their AI and computational photography power. So it has the stainless steel rim that goes all the way around with the stainless steel buttons and of course the Gorilla Glass on front and back. Um, this is IP68 water resistance, which is the highest level. Um, Google are not saying take this swimming, but it does offer some protection against water and sand. So if Google was trying to create a phone that would be noticeable and would stand out, they've certainly done it with this bar across the back. They call this the camera bar. And inside here is where all the magic is and what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this review. All right, so let's get to the good stuff that you came here for. And yes, I am going to be showing you pictures and video and I'll also give you links where you can download uh, images and stuff. So what we've got on the back here is we have a camera bar. So this camera bar contains some different sensors. It contains an LED flash and three cameras. Let's talk about the cameras. The wide angle camera is a 50 megapixel camera. The ultra wide camera is a 12 megapixel camera and then one that probably everyone's gonna be talking about is we've got this zoom camera. It's a 48 megapixel zoom that goes to four times optical zoom and up to 20 times digital zoom. What's really interesting about this is it's actually a periscope camera. That means, you know, if you wanna put the elements in the lens, the phone is a little too thin for that, right? So what they did is they built the elements going up this way, put a 45 degree prism, works just like a periscope, and therefore they can get more optics inside the body than if they were to just do it in the width here, or, or either that, you would have the phone bar sticking out to here. Now, one of the things that Google's always been really good at is computational photography, and, and it's kind of always been their strong point. Now, with the previous pixels, it was pretty good, but they were kind of held back by the hardware. Now they can really beef up the chip and the cameras in here to really take advantage of it. Um, so you've got the hardware mix of the computational photography unlock some interesting things. One of them, of course, is portrait mode, which is not new or really unusual now. Most phones have it. So what it does is it, you know, detects the subject and blurs the background. Now we have the ability to go in here and change the amount of blur, which is really nice. So the interesting thing about this was handheld is I can pan with a subject and I don't even have to be spot on. Like, in fact, I've got an, a car here and I'm just kind of following the car. What it does is it uses computational photography to determine what's the subject, what's the background, adds the blurred background while taking the sharp part of the photo and using that and blending it together. Kind of almost like masking inside of Photoshop. If I was to hold the camera still and, uh, and use the action pan, what would happen is everything would be still and then the moving part would look blurry, which, you know, has its places. The other thing is long exposure. So we all know about long exposure. This is a way to, you know, create that beautiful flowing water use in waterfalls and fountains and things like that. So the nice thing about that is using this, once again, it keeps the areas that should be sharp, sharp, and then takes that slow exposure for the things that are moving, such as the water, and then blends that together and gets us a shot 
that looks like we were using a tripod when in fact it was just handheld. Um, and of course, here's a photo of me in that shot and you can see there, it's just keeping the person nice and sharp while blurring the background. Really love that. And there are also other amazing features in here, such as the Magic Eraser. It's like a content aware fill, which is directly inside the phone, which is really cool. So if you find something you don't want, just draw a circle around for your finger and presto, it's gone. Now portrait mode, you know, we mentioned that a little bit before, you know, we take a photograph of something, boom. And then what it does is it blurs the background. We can adjust the amount of blur. But another interesting thing in here is we can actually take the light. So if we're in portrait mode, we can actually go under our adjustments and we can choose the tools. And under here, we have the ability to move the light. And look at this as I move the light around, you can see it's almost like I'm relighting a scene with an actual light. That's really incredible. This is using, of course, the AI computational photography. All right, so then one of the things that I find interesting with the camera too is there's a little level in here and it shows me when it's not level, but when I hit it right on level, I feel this slight little haptic feedback that lets me know I've got my camera level. And of course this works in portrait and also in landscape mode. Now, when we go into the zoom, we can zoom all the way in and this is really great. You know, there's so many times when you want to zoom, like maybe you're you know, if you're doing wildlife or you're a concert or you're an event, maybe you're not uh, too close. You can zoom in and you can get some really good photos and video. Speaking of video, they've really upped their game with the video because the Pixel always had really good photos. I would say you know, would rival the iPhone photos, but the video always fell short. In this case, now they've really amped up the video. All right, so when we're in the video camera, one of the nice things about the video here is that we have different stabilization modes. We've got standard, which is what you're going to be using most of the time. Locked is really awesome because if we go into the locked mode here, this enables me to zoom in. In fact, I can zoom in really high and what it will do is this will freeze this for me and it will enable me to, you know, just hold it very, very steady for something that's not moving that I want to zoom in really close. Then we have active, you know, when you're running around and doing different things like that. So I'm kind of shaking it a lot right now. And you can see it's not really moving a lot on the camera. It's holding it pretty stable. Pretty nice. Cinematic pan is awesome. Cinematic pan enables me to pan it. And look at this, we just get beautiful, smooth. All right, so those are the different types of stabilization. And then of course we can do slow motion. So when we go into slow motion, this is beautiful for things like water and different things like that. We can slow it down and we can adjust the amount of slow motion just by moving. See when we're in slow motion there, we can go one eighth speed, we can go quarter speed and we can change it. And of course we can go into different cameras. Time-lapse. Time-lapse is awesome. Okay, so we've got different types of time-lapse and even has some hints in here, you know, so say for example, you know, you want to see a person walking or something that's going quite quickly and you want to do that. Something that's moving slowly, we go further up to like the 120, something like a sunrise. We've got moving clouds, so we can adjust the amount that we want here. Do it on any camera, of course, and then we can apply that. So watch this in portrait mode. And we can change to there and see how that depth of field blur kind of happens. Look at this. So the foreground is sharp. Let me tap on the background. Now it switches the focus. Look at that. Let's switch to the camera, switch back to the foreground. And you can see it really has a nice separation here. So that's looking at the camera and the computational photography that's inside of the new Google Pixel Pro. Um, I don't know about you, but I am very, very impressed with this camera. I'm really excited to see what I can do in the future. And I'll do a follow up later on. If you guys got any questions about this, uh, maybe you want to know, drop a question into the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. I'll also drop a link where you can go and have a look at some sample uh, photos and footage. And if you're new and you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my videos. And anyway, guys, if you like this, do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.